Hey everybody, so today I want to do a fun, or what at least I hope to be, a fun little comparison video uh, that uh, I've kind of been curious about myself for a while. Recently I've been redoing my HX Stomp pedal board and I had an idea that if I picked up a delay and a reverb, kind of an outboard delay and reverb to have on that board, it would free me up a couple extra blocks in the stomp. So delay and reverb are something I love to have. Not, not necessarily really overt delays and reverb, but just it's something I tend to use uh, or at least want access to on most of my presets that I use when I'm playing live. So I thought, you know, there's no better reverb out there, arguably, than the Strymon reverbs and Strymon delays, right? So I thought, you know, what if I go pick up the appropriate Strymon pedals and add those to my stomp board? That would probably give me what I want. So I did just that. And what I did is I picked up the Strymon Blue Sky uh, pedal, which is kind of their smaller reverb pedal with three types of reverbs, plate, spring, and room, or you know, slash hall type reverb sounds. Uh, nicely tweakable. You know, so like I said, widely and arguably considered probably some of the finer reverbs available in, in a stomp box format. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to compare those to something like the Pod Go? Now, you know, if you notice the, the title of this video, David versus Goliath, it kind of is that type of a thing because I'm not really going into this expecting the Pod Go to beat uh, the Strymon Blue Sky for reverbs. But let's be fair here, right? Uh, from what I understand, the processing chip in the Blue Sky is more powerful than the entire processing power of the Pod Go. The Pod Go is going to have amps, cabinets, reverbs, delays, other effects, compression, EQs, right? And it's going to be processing all of that at the same time, whereas the Blue Sky has, you know, this powerful processing ability for one reverb sound at a time. So yeah, you know, we would expect the, uh, the Blue Sky to probably eat the Pod Go for, for breakfast, really. Um, you know, so, the other thing to keep in mind is the price, right? You're, you're talking about the Blue Sky pedal being only slightly less expensive, uh, you know, as far as street price goes than a Pod Go, which has all these other capabilities. But I thought it would be fun to kind of say, we know the Strymon's great. How good are the Pod Go reverbs? And another reason I do this is because I've heard a lot of complaints over the years, even about Helix HX Stomp, where people kind of slag the reverbs a bit. And, you know, the reverbs aren't good. And it's, it's one of those complaints. So I thought, well, you know, the reverbs in the Helix and the HX Stomp and whatnot have never been something I have really felt like complaining about. Um, you know, are they going to be the most tweakable or the highest end reverbs? Well, probably not. Um, but just how good or how bad are they? And I thought this would kind of be an interesting way to kind of just put it in perspective up against something that is, like I said, widely considered or arguably a much higher end reverb, right? So let's do that. Let's go over to Pod Go Edit, and I'm gonna kind of explain to you what's happening here. What I've done is I've set up uh, three basic patches that are all the same other than the type of reverb. I have Spring versus Strymon, Plate versus Strymon, and Hall versus Strymon, all right? Uh, so what I've done is I've taken the same preset. I, I really didn't spend any time dialing this in at all. I just took a matchstick channel one, twisted a few knobs, changed the mic. Uh, one thing you'll notice I did do before anybody complains about this is I put a compressor at the end that is basically not compressing at all. So before anybody says, why are you putting compression after a year? It's not compressing at all. The reason I did this is because that's a mono block. I'm set up in mono. Uh, due to my cabling limitations at the time of doing this video, I wasn't able to get this hooked in. Uh, in stereo. So I kind of just was able to set this up quickly on mono. So I wanted to make sure that when I'm using the internal reverb from the Pod Go, it sums to mono as well as the Strymon, uh, which is hooked up in mono. So it's, you know, kind of more of an apples to apples comparison rather than having one in stereo or, or one in mono. So that was the reason behind that. So that's, that's the only reason there. It's not actually doing anything in the way of compression. Okay. So what I've done is I have the uh, Blue Sky hooked into the loop of the Pod Go. And you'll see over there, I have another camera kind of filming what's going on on the Blue Sky so you can see the settings we have going on over there. So I have the loop right here. And what I've done is I've set up two snapshots. So what you'll notice on snapshot one, the loop turns off, okay? And the reverb turns on, uh, the internal Pod Go reverb. When I go to snapshot number two, 
what happens is the reverb is bypassed and the loop turns on. So snapshot two is going to be our blue sky, okay? And snapshot one is going to be our internal pod go reverb once we get playing here. So I start, I'm gonna start off with the hall. On the, on the blue sky, it's called room reverb. Uh, you know, a room and a hall reverb are kind of very similar other than just the size ability. In the Podgo Helix HX Stomp, we have a room which goes up to a certain decay, and then we have a hall which goes even, even bigger. So I just decided to use the hall. It was just a little easier to kind of match them up. Now, this is kind of interesting because there's going to be a lot of folks that might have different ways of wanting to test these. What I'm going to do is I, I, I have very, I got the Blue Sky yesterday. I didn't even use it until I plugged it in this morning in this configuration just to try it out because I thought, let's see what this sounds like. Very impressed so far, but I've had literally like 15 minutes with it. So all I did is I tried to kind of get three reverbs going in the pod go, spring, plate, and hall, and kind of match up settings on the blue sky to get somewhere in the ballpark. But then I'll show you kind of how twisting the knobs to more extremes might make it sound, okay? So I'm not claiming that I matched these. I tried to get them sort of close so we can hear kind of how, what the difference is with them. Now, again, keep in mind, the blue sky is a much more uh, flexible reverb unit. The, the parameters on it, the, the sweeps on the, on the parameters are much more drastic and it's going to be much easier to fine tune, but as is expected, it's a dedicated unit, right? And you'll kind of see that as we go through. All right, so let me grab a guitar and let's take a little listen to what's going on. Okay, so here we are with our little preset here. Let me just turn the reverb off on here. And this is what this little uh, preset through the Master Channel 1 sounds like. Okay, so that's it. Now, let's turn the reverb back on. So this is the internal pod go hall reverb with these settings here. So I have a decay of 6.2, I have the pre-delay at zero, low cut at 170 hertz, high cut at 10 kilohertz, mix at 43%, the trail's turned on. With that on, this is what this sounds like. And I'll just do some chord stabs and let's try to listen. And I hope you're listening on good headphones or on a good speaker system where you can kind of really hear the details in the reverb. Um, listen for the trails on the reverb, like just kind of how they decay and some of the high-end qualities and whatnot. So here's the pod go reverb. Okay, you'll notice what I did is I turned the high cut up to 10 kilohertz so that we get a little more of the high-end information and not chomping that off. A lot of times these are set much lower, you know, down maybe around here. where it darkens them up. And oftentimes I would set it there too, but for this we want to actually hear those little trails going off. Okay, so let's go to snapshot two, and this is the Strymon Big Sky now. Back to snapshot one, big sky off, pod go reverb. Big sky. What do you think? I was actually quite impressed with the pod go. Um, like I said, now if I go in and start turning the knobs here, the high damp uh, feature on the blue sky is quite nice. So you can get very, a lot of high end information here. Let's turn that to there. <laughs> If 
I was to take the high cut all the way up on this, Let's see what happens if we just crank the mix to 100% on both. So here is the big sky. Now bring the, the decay up a bit on the... You know, so I think there's, there's some qualities about the Big Sky that definitely are better, as is to be expected. I mean, I don't think that's any surprise at all, but I am kind of impressed with how good the Pod Go is for the built-in reverbs, which it's not a dedicated reverb unit, you know? Uh, if I had the choice, would I want the Blue Sky? Absolutely. But the Pod Go is very impressive for what it is. So that's the Hall Verbs. Now, let's do this. Let's go over. I'm going to get the Blue Sky set up for some plate sounds as well as the Pod Go. Okay, here we are back now with the plate reverbs and... Um, Again, same sort of idea here. Snapshot one is going to be our uh, pod go reverb. Snapshot two will turn that off and engage the effects loop, which would be the big sky. Um, again, let's keep something in mind here. The blue sky does have a lot more possibilities, right? It has a normal mode, a modulated reverb, a shimmer verb, some really nice possibilities and the ability to store uh, a favorite that you can switch back and forth between what's, what's on, you know, face value or where the knobs are set in your favorite. So some nice, nice features. So it, uh, this video is more just about the quality of the reverb sound and not so much feature set, right? Because obviously it's going to have probably an easier ability to dial them in than let's say the Pod Go does or the Helix or the HX. Not, but again, I'm so far very impressed with the Pod Go against sort of the, the David versus Goliath type of thing. So here we go. Here is the, the uh, plate reverb on the, on the Pod Go, sorry, at just some settings that I came up with. So this is what this sounds like. And you'll notice the settings I've changed over here to plate on the big sky. So let's go over to snapshot two. Back to pod go. Maybe we have a little bit bigger decay going there. I'll turn the decay up a bit on the big sky. So here's the pod go. Might be a little bit better. Let's 
let's take the plate and turn the high cut right off. So I would say on the Big Sky, there's something more pristine about the high end on it. It's just, it, it, does, it is nicer, but I am really blown away by how good the Pod Go sounds. And, you know, by, by association, the Helix and the HX Thomp, these are very usable reverbs and maybe not quite as bad as some folks think they are when you do a direct comparison. I don't know. I mean, there's other ways to compare it. It's really going to depend on how overt you use it and what your final outcome is and your goal. But especially if you were using it in a very subtle manner, I, man, oh man, I would really have to say I'm very impressed with the, the HX reverbs or the Podgo, uh, you know, from HX Stomp, Helix, and so on and so forth. Let's do this. Let's maybe crank the, um, what happens if we crank the decay right up? Let's check this out on both. So there, there goes the decay. So that's the big sky. That's a long, nice delay, but do you hear how beautiful and pristine the high end is on the trails? Let's switch over to the pod go. Notice there's a difference there. Now let, let's maybe pull this back a little bit. Back to the Strymon. Change the high damp on that. That gets pretty sizzly. As we can see, the low and high damp controls are, are very useful on the Blue Sky, and that's something I don't think we would ever be able to kind of emulate on the Pond Go. That's one of the major benefits. But I'm really impressed by this setting here, where on the Blue Sky you get such a smooth decay. All the way down as it fades out, back to the Pod Go, Not quite as smooth, but still actually quite impressive at these settings. And like I said, when you come down to a more, you know, maybe reasonable setting. Back to the blue sky. I'm not disappointed in the Podgo reverbs. They're very good. I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised and thought they may 
maybe wouldn't have even done as well as they're doing against the, the big sky. Okay, last but not least, let's go over and check out what I think some people's biggest complaint about Helix HX Stomp Reverbs and, and Pod Goers is the spring verb. And I chose to use the spring 63, but let's go over to that and we'll, we'll check that out. Okay, so here we are back with the spring reverb. Now, this is the one where I would expect the big sky to do a lot better on. Um, okay, so here is the sound of the Pod Go spring verb with these settings you see up on screen. Okay, maybe lacking a little springiness of the springs, if that's even a word. Let's go over to the big sky. You hear the you hear more of the springiness in there. Let's turn the decay up a little bit more on that. Back to the pod go. Big sky. Even crank these decays maybe all the way up on both and see what happens. So here's the big sky. Pod go. Back to the big sky. Bring those back down a bit. What happens if we take that high damp and get rid of that? You hear the nice spring effect on that. Let's take the high cut all the way up. Again, I think the Pod Go is doing better than I thought it would. Um, the Big Sky is the definite winner in my books here, in my opinion. Uh, you get more of that spring sound to it, uh, a little more pristine sounding. Uh, in a good way. Now, the other thing is I believe there's some ways to kind of uh, affect different parameters as well if I haven't looked into the manual totally about what the low damp and, and whatnot is doing. But just from those settings, if we...
Not bad. Impressive. Okay, so my takeaway is I'm extremely impressed with the Blue Sky Paddle. I love it. And, you know, no, no uh, surprise there. The fine folks at Strymon have been making amazing effects for a long time. Everybody knows that. But I was really curious to put those side by side. Now, obviously, it's hard in a video to do every possible combination. There's so many parameters that can be tweaked. And obviously, like I said, I wasn't expecting the pod go to beat the blue sky. I was just more curious about seeing how it kind of hung in there in this sort of David and Goliath sort of a, of a situation. And I would say that my hat's off to the folks at Line 6 here with the pod go. This is an impressive unit, considering that for slightly more money than, than something like the Blue Sky, uh, we're getting all these amp models. We're getting all sorts of other effects, okay? So I'm gonna do some more like this with the sort of Podgo versus Strymon thing in the near future with some other effects. And I think it'll be kind of interesting to see how it kind of, if it holds its own. I Here's my conclusion. I'm super happy to have a Podgo, but I'm also super happy now to be incorporating some of these beautiful Strymon reverbs into my uh, HX Stomp pedal board kind of free up a couple blocks that I can throw some uh, other effects uh, into the HX Stomp and still have these beautiful reverbs uh, on my board. So that's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have a video about putting that pedal board together real soon. I'm just waiting for a few more components to come in uh, that I wanna add to the board and make it uh, work the way I want it to. So anyways, I, that was more just to be an enjoyable little look at comparing these two amazing products. Uh, go give the folks at Strymon a look. They have so many amazing pedals available. Uh, really, really great stuff. And also go give my friends over at Line 6 a look. The Podgo HX Stomp Helix. You don't get doesn't get much better than those products as far as effects amp modeling and you know as as the units for what they are are really hard to beat and they have become a major part of my musical life and I'm so happy to be part of that so anyways as for now guys thank you so much for tuning in I really really appreciate you guys hanging out and listening through this and I hope somebody found something useful in there you know um, it, it was fun to do and I'm looking forward to uh, using the Strymon uh, effects uh, more in the future in conjunction with my amazing Line 6 products. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Please like the video, share it to, uh, with anybody who you think might be interested in taking a look into it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification uh, if you haven't already so you get notified of all the videos I do and I'll have a lot more coming up real soon. As for now, thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.